Hello everybody. Happy Friday. If you're watching in the replay, uh, thanks for watching. I don't care when you guys watch it. If you have to watch it during the replay, I appreciate that too. You know, I watch most of my live video, not my own, but the ones that I want to watch, I watch most of them in replay too. Hi guys, I see you jumping on. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure I'm in the right place. You guys know I'm paranoid. Hi, Gina. How are you? Hi, Stacy and Alessandra. Hi. So glad you guys could join me today. I have to be quiet. I have to remember my husband came home early from some business thing and he's asleep. So I don't want to wake him up. Hopefully he'll stay asleep. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me. All right, I'm gonna get started showing you guys a couple of things that I got in the mail. I wanna say, first of all, that so many of you sent me birthday cards. They have just been coming in all week and it's just so sweet. And I actually have been collecting them in a bag and I can't even remember now which ones I've shown you, which ones I haven't shown you. But I pulled out a couple of things I just wanna show you really quickly and then we'll move on from my birthday, I promise. This is like the birthday that never ends. Um, I have to show you my downline, Lisa Cunningham. She used to live here in San Antonio, but a couple of years ago moved um, back to California where she's from. Super sweet, we've gotten to be good friends, and she knows me really well because look what she sent me. Can you guys tell what that is? Yeah, that's a Diet Coke holder and three bottles. So stinking cute. I It like blew my mind when I saw it. I don't know if Lisa watches my lives, but Lisa, so sweet. She made cute little printable notes for the back from the desk of. So it's like a little desk thing. Isn't that so cute? She used our little bottle framelits and did a whole bunch of them together so that they would be 3D. And then she put some of the lids together and rounded them so they'd be on top. I just... I have not seen anything like that. So I just thought that was so cute and I had to share it with you guys. She also sent me, she sent me a whole goodie box, but I'm just gonna show you a couple. Look at the little gift box. Of course, pink and white buffalo check with turquoise bottom. So cute, there's a little plug-in in there from um, Bath & Body Works. I'm telling you, she, she knows me, she knows me well. And then my friend Alessandra, who's here, also on my team, sent me some Buffalo Check shoes. She messaged me a couple of weeks ago asking me what my shoe size was, and I thought, oh my gosh, what's happening? What am I gonna wear? And she totally knew. Alessandra has great taste. She sent me adorable black and white Buffalo Check flats. They're so cute. Um, and then she made this little gift tag to go with it. Isn't it so cute? It's funny how, how well you guys know me, even though some of us, we don't see each other except on Facebook Live or on Facebook, you know, just chatting. I, I don't know. Anyways, both of those touched me. All of you touched me. Thank you all for sending the cards and the treats. It was really a fun week to, to check the mail. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of announcements. It's the World Card Making Day. My lights are really washing things out. Hmm. World Card Making Day sale. Hopefully you guys have seen this. If you go over to the Stampin' Up! store, um, right the very first little thing on the side says World Card Making Day sale. So instead of trying to figure out what all these things are on the PDF, you can just scroll down and see the pictures. Um, I, if you watched my video on Tuesday, I pointed out some of my favorites. The P.S. I Love You, right? Is that what it's called? P.S. You're the Best. Sorry. P.S. You're the Best. This is the birthday card I got. Let's cover it up. The lights are for when I do my demonstration, but when I'm standing here, it's kind of watching everything out. This is from Crystal, another one of my downlines, so cute. But this stamp set's on sale, and I love this stamp set. I pointed that out on Tuesday. Um, there's also some kits. If you want to get some Christmas gifts, get a head start, those kits are great because they have the ink, they have the block, they have the stamps. So if you have maybe um, a friend, a sister, a mom, um, or even like a teenager or a tween, you don't know what to buy them, this is a great gift. Um, anybody can do it. It has everything they need in the box, um, and it's it, they all take a couple hours. So it really is kind of an investment in time away from devices, right? So the Notes of Kindness card kit, the Soft Sayings kit, and um, there was one other one I thought, uh, lots of happy card kit. So they're 10% off. Everything on this list is 10% off until the 7th, which would be Sunday. 
Um, so if you're gonna put an order in connected to today's Facebook Live, that may be um, the section you wanna check out, these things that are on sale. Um, also worth mentioning, are the dimensionals they are 350 instead of four there we go <laughs> they're four no 350 so instead of buying five you could buy seven i don't know that's how that's how my shopping math works um also tear and tape which i'm going to use today tear and tape if you haven't tried it it's a great time to to try it with it on sale so that sale goes through monday all right Okay, so um, let's do some prizes. How about prizes? Um, okay, so if you are new to Facebook Friday, I have two ways to win. Sharing the video and going over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, and the post hopefully is live. And at the bottom, there's a raffle copter where you just enter your name. And I sometimes ask you silly questions. I think this time I'm asking you, it's not so silly. I wanna know what Christmas sets you want me to feature, because I'm gonna start on Christmas next week, it's time. I gotta start showing you guys some Christmas stuff so that you have time to order, get all your Christmas stuff ready. Um, so sh give me a shout out, let me know what you wanna see over there on that raffle copter. And when you do, you're entered to win a prize. Um, so last week, the winners, I've already emailed them. Hopefully you can see Phyllis Werner and Mary, no, yes, Mary Rita are getting my favorite country home stamp set. So congratulations, ladies. Um, and then I gave, I offered two bolts of ribbon for those of you who shared. And here are our winners, Gwen Crawford and Diane Ebeling. I think I said that right. Ladies, I don't have your mailing addresses, so message me or email me at Erica. E-R-I-C-A at pinkbuckaroo.com so I can get these to you. This is that glitter, um, black glitter ribbon that's so good for Halloween. This week I'm gonna do it a little differently. I'm gonna give away two identical prizes, one for sharing and one for over there. So really you have two chances to win the Many Blessings stamp set and the Simply Chamois. So sharing the video will enter you in the drawing for this as well as the other one, go over to my blog and fill out the raffle copter and let me know what Christmas stamp sets you want to see in the next probably two months as I try to navigate through all of our fun Christmas stuff, okay? Let me know what you want to see. So those will be next week's prizes. Um, if you're new to Facebook Friday or if you've forgotten, I always type up a PDF for Friday. I used to be a teacher, so this is kind of like my lesson plan. Um, I work on it all week getting it ready for you guys. This week's theme is the Falling for Leaves bundle, which I'll show you that in a second. It's in a basket. Um, so three projects today we're going to do with the Falling for Leaves bundle. All the product information and the measurements are here. And then on the second sheet are links to the two classes I have going out right now. Um, this can be found at pinkbuckaroo.com. Always on my Facebook Friday post, under the last photo, you'll see a link. People seem to miss it, and I don't know what to do to make it more obvious, but it's just a link. You click on it, and it'll take you to this PDF. When I'm done, I'm also gonna start putting the link here on Facebook in the description for you. Um, so, if, uh, when you get that, you'll have the measurements of products uh, that you need for the projects that we're making. Also, the host code for today is on there. And the host code is good from now until Monday at midnight. And if you use the host code on a minimum $30 order, I'm gonna send you today's make and takes for free. Three make and takes for you. And this is what they look like. Here's last week's. And I had a boo-boo last week. <laughs> But let's just say it's taken care of. Everybody's things are on their way. I was chatting. I will admit I was chatting on the phone while I was packing these up into an envelope with Kara. I don't know if Kara's on here. We were talking business and I forgot something. So anyways, it's all taken care of. So this is what the make and takes look like. Um, they'll come ready for you to use. So if you don't have the stamp set and the framelits, and you wanna order them, do that, and you'll be able to have three projects made with it, as well as, remember, this one was on Tuesday, the little K-cup, all right? So you have four projects, really, that you could make with your Falling Leaves Bundle. Now, if you already have the Falling Leaves Bundle, 
order something else. Who cares? I don't care what you order. <laughs> really, I don't. Um, but as long as that order is $30, you will get those make and takes for free. Um, the other thing I offer is if you bump your order to 50, you get this month's PDF, October. Have I shown you guys the project? I'm, it's supposed to be a secret, but I'm going to show you. Let me grab it. We all do, let's see if I have it over here. Hmm. Yep, here it is. All the designers, so we're from, well, the bow has fallen off. The PDF that I offer is designed by 12 different designers from around the world. Um, all different countries that Stampin' Up! is in, it's really kind of cool. And so all the projects in the PDF are done in metric and inches. And so all of us, all the designers, all 12 of us, offer it free with a minimum $50 order. It's also for sale for $15 in my PDF store if you wanna just buy it. Maybe you're a demonstrator and you don't wanna put in an order with me because you order with yourself, that's fine. It's still for sale for 15, but you can get it for free if you're a customer and you put in an order that is $50 um, or more. And also if you're on my team, they get all my PDFs for free all of them so that's one that they got um last week or this week um, when it came out for free so anyway so it's supposed to be a secret right we all do our projects and we do these step-by-step -step tutorials and i'm not allowed to show to post a picture on my blog of it so it's a surprise but i could just show you real quick do you guys want to see it it's so cute it's featuring the little um, Santa's workshop dudes aren't they cute and it's a gift box all right that's all that's all I'm gonna show I don't want to get in trouble oh thanks Alessandra she says they're amazing thank you I think they're amazing too and I use that PDF throughout the month too for inspiration um, a lot of the designers are former artisans or um, business you know people you will recognize just really good designers so the PDF is amazing so $50 if you put a $50 order in, I will email it to you for free. I email those out once a week and I haven't done this week yet. So if you put in an order this week, it's coming, I promise. Um, I email them out once a week and you, that, you can get them that way for free or you join my team, you get them all for free. Um, or you can order it for $15 in my store. Okay, now speaking of falling for leaves, um, you know what, I think I'm gonna turn the camera around so I can show you. I have a couple of additional projects I wanna show you, um, as well as, <laughs> thanks Terry, um, as well as the classes that I have. And I think you'll be able to see them better if I put my camera over here. Um, you guys, I'm trying out a new software soon, hopefully that I won't have to switch my phone over if I can figure it out. So. Hopefully that's coming. I shouldn't have even told you because then if I don't do it, y'all will be disappointed. But I don't know. I'm trying it. Anyway, I am going to do the super non-smooth movement of my phone over here. And hopefully you guys don't get motion sick. I know when I'm watching a live video, I'm not always watching. I'm listening. I don't know about you guys. But I like to listen while I work or while I work out or whatever so hopefully you're not looking right now ah oh, thanks I'm glad you like them the tutorials are so fun Kylie Bertucci from Australia started that a couple of years ago it's been a couple of years now and um, she asked me to participate and um, I have I jumped right on that I think that's an amazing resource for uh, you guys as a customer and for me as a demonstrator to be able to offer that okay so today is falling for leaves I cannot let it go by without mentioning my class to go. Let me get my cheat sheet out of here. Um, and you know what? Let's see. Somebody, and I just, and I was going to remember her name. She said, Erica, I think your missing framelit is down in the bottom of that basket. Unfortunately, it was not. This is from the other set. And my cheat sheet is gone. Mm. Let me see, is this it? All right, this is it. So this is my Falling for Leaves class to go. Six projects, all featuring what we're going to be using today. Um, four options. The first option includes everything you see here, including the Nature's Palm Twine, the bundle, and all six make and takes and the PDF. That's $60. Um, and it's mailed to you, flat rate, priority mail. For those of you that already have this and want just this, 
that is $33. Um, by the way, the first option, I always throw the embellishment in for free when I calculate that cost. So if you don't have the bundle, it's a really good um, way to buy it because you're getting something for free in there. Um, option three is PDF only, of course. It's in my PDF store. And option four is for my downline. They get everything for $13. Super cheap for them as a business tool or for fun. There's Lisa. Lisa, you're late and I showed your cute little, your little Coke bottles. I'm so glad you're here. It's so hard when we're on different time zones, right? I never know when I can text you or call you, but I know that in the afternoon we're good. Anyways, Lisa, thank you again. Everybody loved it as much as I did. All right, the deadline on that Falling Leaves class, you guys, is October 16th, which is next. Let me look. No, two, a week and a half, week after next, the Tuesday, and then they ship out by October 23rd. Um, the other class I have going features, it's my first Christmas class, and it's a stamp a stack. It'll have 10 cards in there featuring, oops, that one's not supposed to be in there. That was from last week. Um, featuring the Making Spirits Bright bundle, punch and stamps, and the satiny ribbon. If you buy the first option, it's $57 and you're getting the ribbon for free. Second option is $30 um, without these, if you already have the bundle. Um, third option is PDF only, $15. And the fourth option, again, is for my team, $13. So if you're interested in these, check out my blog or that PDF right here, the one that's for today. If you type those in, you'll find the information that you need, okay? All right, so that's that. Deadline on that one is October 24th, so we still have a little ways to go. Okay, I think I have covered it all. Let me get a little drink. I really love today's projects, and I think part of it is because I really love this bundle. Okay, let's see. I want to show you guys first. I already reminded you of the project we did here, right? This was on Tuesday. You can find the video. It's now on YouTube, but it's also here. Um, today, we're going to make this cute little apple box, and I'll show you what's in there. A treat pouch and a card with, of course, the buffalo check. Now, if you're in my stamp club to go, close your eyes if you want to be surprised, okay? Because I'm getting ready to show one of your projects. My stamp club to go, um, they get three projects from me every month. And this month, the scrapbook page looks like this. I don't even know if I can get it all to fit in. Isn't that beautiful? If I do say so myself. Um, lots of those leaves. And then here is, for those that don't scrapbook, here's the card option. Isn't that beautiful? And that's, I can't remember that stamp set, but it has that big, you know, scrolly stamp and then four sentiments. <laughs> I can't remember the name. But anyway, um... The camera's moving quite a bit, like waves in the ocean. That's weird, Sarah. Is anybody else seeing that? Oh, you know what? I am seeing it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna turn my fan all the way off. That will help. It gets hot in here with these lights. I thought I could keep it on, but I guess not. So here's another um, project using those leaves. And of course, those projects in, in the class that I just showed you. I have used this stamp set so much that my <laughs> stamps are super stained. All right, well, I think we're ready to get started. Don't forget that you can hop over to pinkbuckaroo.com and get these PDFs. Hopefully it went up. And let's get started. Let me make some room here. I always start out so super organized and then it's a giant mess. All right, our first project is a treat pouch. And I'm gonna rearrange this just for a second because I really cannot stand for this to be crooked. And I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of tape so it doesn't slide around on me. This treat pouch is inspired by a design from my friend, Angie Judah, um, Chicken Scratch. You guys know her, I'm sure. She did something similar to this and I adapted it a little bit to hold something a little fatter and made it fall. So that's what we're gonna make. All right, what you're going to need, 
You're gonna need them for me first to get all my things out. Get my ducks in a row here. And we're gonna start, oh, I need to show you what's inside, don't I? All right, now what I found to go inside was is from World Market. Do you guys have a World Market where you're at? And it, I love World Market. It's kind of a new discovery for me. I've been there a lot, but lately I've just really been loving it. These chai tea shortbread, and it's biscott tea. See how they spelled it? I don't know, it's kind of funny. Um, so anyways, I bought a few that day and then decided I wanted to um, do this project, something similar to this for my stamp club, and I went back and there were only like six of them. And so I can't find them anywhere online, so boo. However, I think that you could really kind of slide anything in here, um, you know, like a little pack of Reese's Pieces or, a, you know, a tea bag, a chai tea bag. Um, but anyway, that's what I have in mind. I'm actually, we have one more world market that I can go to. Um, it's super far though. And I'm gonna try to get over there this weekend. Or I may send my husband. <laughs> it's over by his work. All right, so let me get my Simply Sport. We're gonna start out with a piece of soft suede. And I gotta look at my measurements on the sheet. And this is seven by seven. Oops, let's move that. And we're gonna score one side at two inches and five and a fourth. And it doesn't matter which side because it's a square. And then we're gonna turn it and score the other side at one and five eighths, one and seven eighths, and six and a fourth. Now this little space right here is what's gonna kind of create a little bit um, more of an opening at the top. All right, now, by the way, you guys, I have already re uh, recorded clean versions of these. I did them this morning. They're already edited, edited and uploaded. So you guys will be able to find them on YouTube, hopefully this evening, okay? In case you wanna recreate this and you don't wanna have to go all the way through the live video again. All right, look, I remembered my bone folder today. I never can remember to get my bone folder when I am making a video. But I have made a little basket for myself, so hopefully I will always remember to get it now because it's in my basket. Um, this one right here, this one that's only a fourth, see how there's two right there? That's really hard to fold without a bone folder. Um, when you're just using your hands, it's hard to kind of get to those. So that's why I made sure I had the bone folder for this one. Sometimes I can get away with just using my fingers. All right, I'm gonna cut out the rectangles in the four corners. Oh yes, Karen, TJ Maxx is another great place for those things. Um, I love TJ Maxx for finding little snacks and treats. You're right, and I have not been there for a while. Um, you know, but the thing with TJ Maxx is, you might find it, you might not. It may be there when you go back, it might not. Um, I wanna point out here that there are two lines right here. That, remember I told you that's where that quarter of an inch is. We are cutting out that entire section. We're not leaving that one there. So cut that all the way off, and there we go. I do love me some TJ Maxx. We have a really big one here too. All right, we're gonna round these corners at the top and the bottom. Um, this is our detailed trio punch. Is there something in there? It feels like there is. Yep, little piece of paper. All right, so, whoops. <laughs> you could, you could round those too if you wanted, but I'm gonna keep it simple. And we are just rounding the top and the bottom. And when I get to the bottom, it's, I can't really get it in there like this because of this. So I have to close that one over and punch. All right, there we go. So I'm using that corner rounder. This has three different things, a whole little flower detail and the corner rounder. All right, now, we have one side that is longer than the other, so it's gonna overlap right here. So I'm gonna take that tear and tape that's on sale and put it right there and fold that over. Now I'm gonna get this guy. This reminds me of the report card envelopes that my kids still use. They still bring those home in elementary school with those little rounded flaps. 
Fresh Market, Sarah. I've never heard of that. We must not have that here. All right, so there's our envelope. And let's put our little shortbread cookie in there. Just like that. And it folds over like that. Isn't that cute? And I think that's a really easy one to re to recreate, if you, especially if you need to do a bunch of them. All right, I went to my Bright's stack. And this is driving me crazy. Um, I went to my Bright Stack and got Mango Melody. This is a great fall color. And I cut one inch by six inch strip. And it's really, oh, my fast fuse is out. I have another one right here. It's really um, longer than it needs to be. But I just kept it simple since those are six inches by six inch pieces. That way you just cut two strips to make a long strip. And then you're gonna fold it over this is going to be a belly band and a belly band slides off so we don't want to adhere it to the holder we just want to adhere it to itself so end over end like that on the back and then you can see it's going to slide like that okay let's see i think we'll do the stamping next okay just make sure i have that braid of linen trim i have cut out a large pumpkin pie stitched square with a stitched um, shape framelits. You guys know those are my very favorite. Use them every day. And I'm stamping this large, beautiful, detailed leaf in pumpkin pie. So tone on tone. And like we talked about on Tuesday, if you're going to use this leaf and you want to, if you have the time, then go ahead and color it with your blends or your watercolor pencils. But if we're making something that is gonna, we're gonna need a bunch of them, like 30, 40, 50 of them, that will take us weeks to color all that in. So I'm just gonna take my Wink of Stella and just, whoa, went real crazy there, that's all right. Um, and just kind of do every other little segment there. I'm gonna do the middle parts. And when it dries, it's just very light. And you kind of kind of can see a little bit of change there, but it's not too drastic. And it's quick. All right, so let's adhere that to. Hi, everybody who's joining. Thank you for joining us. Melissa, where in Texas are you from? I am in Texas too. Hi, Betty. All right, dimensionals, this is a the largest scalloped square in the layering square framelits. And then we're going to stamp the sentiment. I love the fonts in this set. It is, they are so cute. Harvest of Thanks, right there in the middle. Soft suede ink. I'm gonna grab that tailored tag punch and just punch this into a banner. And yes, you can use your triple banner punch if you have it. You just need to make your piece a little bit longer. And I did not put the measurements of this on the PDF, I don't think. It's three-fourths by three and a half, I believe. All right, let's put that across, of course, with dimensionals. Uh-oh, I might have put that one out too far, but we'll see. And no, that's good. And we'll cover up that little blob that I left there with a wink of Stella. There we go. All right, we're almost done. Let's see. It ran away, couldn't find it. Okay, get it together, Erica, here it is. Everything's right here, but I can't see anything. This is the braided linen trim, and I love it. It's from the Holiday Catalog, and it is such a great, it's, it's like our linen thread, except it's thicker. And um, I just really like it. I really hope that it carries over and we have, have it for a long time. It's great for these, these fall projects, for masculine projects, for rustic projects. Now I tied that around the belly band so that it will slide off with the belly band. And I'm gonna put these dimensionals right here on that DSP. Remember, don't stick anything to your holder. And we're just gonna put that guy right there. And we're done. Ta-da! Let's see, let me get this one straightened back out. There we go. All right, project number one. I told you guys it was easy, right? Easy and quick. Now, if we can just find those biscotti 
little treats. Hopefully you guys can find them if you want them. They did say they were getting more in. They just didn't have any when I needed them. All right, let me get my second project. Now this one is so fun. And I have to say what's inside also came from World Market. I really, I got lucky when I went to World Market. So here it is, and I designed this with an apple in mind. See how it's red, and I was taking the stem, because inside is this tiny little jar of, it says, Blackberry Patch Apple Butter. So cute, I'd never seen these before. And I have noticed um, some people swapping in uh, the last time I was at on stage, little jars of homemade jams and stuff. So I thought, oh, we should make a little box for those. So that's what's inside, it slides off, and you can see it's a perfect fit. Now, if you don't have these or you don't want to go get these, that's okay. You can just put candy. There's some uh, Werther's apple caramel candies that would be really cute in here. Um, or just caramels or just Hershey Kisses even. Okay, let's get started on this one. I am using Poppy Parade. I am really loving Poppy Parade since it came back. It is a fun fun color. Was it expensive? Sarah, the, the little jelly doesn't have a price on it, but I want to say it was like $1.99. I think. In my mind, that's what I'm thinking. But it doesn't have a price. All right, so this Poppy Parade is seven and a half by four and three fourths. I'm going to start here on the long side, and I'm going to score it at one and three fourths, three and a half, five and a fourth, and seven. Turn it and score it at one and three fourths. Then, before we put the scoreboard away, let's get the top. The lid is soft suede and it is five and a fourth by five and a fourth. And I'm going to score all four sides at one and three fourths. Hershey caramel apple filled chocolates. Um, excuse me, I have not heard of those, Crystal. That sounds delicious. Debbie, was that you? Did we chat, Debbie? I feel like we did. And you had that cute little jar of, of it was like a jelly at, on stage. It was so cute. I saw those jars at recently at Target. You can buy just the jars at Target. Made me think of that. Okay, you know what? I started with the lid, but I need to focus. I'm gonna not look at comments for a second, so I make sure I do this right. Here's the bottom. Let's do the bottom first. And I'm going to, with my handy bone folder, score all of those lines and the one that goes across. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and we've got a skinny rectangle right here. Oh, come on. Can't get it in that groove right there. There we go. Cut that one off, we don't need it. And then cut this one and this one, and this one. So all of those up. Then come back to the skinny tab right here and just cut those corners off. All right, there. Now back to the tear and tape, which is perfect for this. There we go. Like that, and then I'm gonna peel that off. Tear and tape is what I would definitely recommend for this box specifically because that jar is a little bit heavy. All right, so there we go. I folded it over like that. We've got a box. And now we're just going to fold these bottoms in. And I'm going to find that edge. Here's the edge. So I'm going to make sure that's on the back. So that means the one on the front is the last one I'm going to fold in, okay? So I'm going to stick that up so I remember. I'm going to stick in one side. And then I'm going to put some tear and tape first on this side, the other side tab. I know I'm like turning it all around and you're probably like, I have no idea what's what, but it'll make sense in a minute. Oh, come on, tear and tape. There we go, okay, so here's the front. We fold it in a side, we're gonna fold in the other side, and then we're gonna put some tear and tape on the back flap. Normally, I probably wouldn't put adhesive on three out of the four, I'd probably just put it on maybe the last one, but because this, again, is a heavy box, I do not want the bottom falling out in that jar. 
of the apple butter crashing to the floor and breaking. There we go. All right, so now you can see here's the front and it that last flap folded over so that we have a nice clean fold there. There's no rough edge. All right, so there's the bottom. Let's put that little butter in there. Now here's the lid. Uh, before I start cutting any of the lines, I'm gonna cut all the corners off from score line to score line. All right, score line to score line, diagonal. Then I'm gonna cut the score lines on two opposite sides. It doesn't matter which two, but if you're gonna do the bottom, then do the top, all right? And they're all the same. You just need to do the two that are opposite each other. All right, now this is how our box is gonna go. Here are our tabs, it's gonna fold in like that, and these are gonna come up. So I'm just gonna put some tear and tape here on both of these sides. Oh no, there we go, right here. Ooh, it's getting toasty in here without my fan on. I gotta, I gotta figure that out. These lights are hot. I gotta get a different fan or something because my phone, I don't want it to shake for you guys, but it is hot. All right, folding them in and then folding this up like that. Same thing on this side. Uh-oh, I gotta hurry. Oh, come on. These projects were pretty simple today. I thought maybe I would get done early, but now I'm thinking I'm not gonna get done early. All right, there we've got that one and that one. So there's the lid. And to get it on here, I'm gonna squeeze it in up just a little bit, like that, kind of have to wiggle it on, because the lid is the same size as the box. So it's a very tight fit. All right, see that? I wanted it to really fit onto that and be exactly the same. All right, let's make the tag now. We're going to need so saffron, and we're gonna cut that out with the open, the big open stamp, and then I'm gonna get the this leaf right here. Let me show you which one it is. That one right there. And I'm gonna stamp it in soft suede on crumb cake. And just so you guys know, my stamps have turned pink because I have used them a ton. I know, it kind of looks weird, but that just means I have used them and used them and used them and they've stained. They still work perfectly fine. They're just stained from the, the darker inks. Okay, so let's start with a magnetic platform. And I'm gonna slide this one right here, put that there, and then we're gonna get the framelit that matches these leaves and put that right there. and run that through, but we're not done yet. But wait, there's more. I don't wanna put the big shot away yet. Let me get these out of here. I'm gonna get my corrugated embossing folder. I have been using it a ton. It's awesome, it's my favorite. We're gonna use it on the next project too. And we're gonna put some texture on this leaf. Now I have to put my, I took out my magnetic platform to, and put in my regular Big Shot platform. That's what you have to do with your embossing folders. And I'm gonna put this leaf in here and run it through. And voila. Now I've mentioned to you guys too that when you put this in, if you put it in with the lines going this way, it's more likely to tear your paper. But if you put it in going this way, with those lines where it's like going over one line at a time, it's less likely to tear. So that's just a little tip from me when you're using that one. All right, so now we're just gonna start stacking things up. I'm gonna use a dimensional right here. Now when I made my video earlier today, I totally tore the leaf. So hopefully I won't do that this time. I'm gonna use the Garden Green Baker's Twine, and it's with Christmas stuff, but that doesn't mean it has to be for Christmas. Garden Green is a great fall color too. All right, I've made kind of a big wide bow because I want it to be seen behind the Poppy Parade bow. And I'm gonna stick that on with a glue dot. Then, 
I'm gonna get my Poppy Parade woven ribbon. My favorite ribbon right now, I think. I don't know, maybe one of my favorites. I don't know if I could pick my most favorite, but this one is in, definitely in the top three. All right, a quick bow and another couple of glue dots. I'm gonna use two, two glue dots here because it's kind of big. And I'm gonna put it just a tiny bit below that green twine bow because I want that to be seen too. And it looks like this needs to be trimmed. All right, the last thing. Oh, look at that, I did it again. Oh, let's put a dimension on there. That's exactly the same leaf that I tore during my original video. Hmm. All right, there we go. Now, let's do the sentiment and we will be done with project number two. All right, this is the word thankful from this stamp set on a strip of Whisper White. Again, with that Taylor Tag Punch. Oops, a little bit shorter. Just to make it long enough for the words. Thanks, Betty. I hope you guys liked that. Um, let's see, where do I wanna put this today? Well, I guess it's gonna cover that leaf up. Anyway, hmm. <laughs> where should it go? Well, sorry, Leaf, you're getting covered up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video I did earlier this week on the um, chamois. I kind of had a, I was trying to think of a tip to share and I kind of had a like, oh, I can make a video. Everybody keeps asking about the chamois. It was fun. All right, two dimensionals on the back and we stick it on the front to just the lid. That way it comes off with a lid. See how it slides off with a lid? And there you go. A little jar box. Isn't that so cute? And it's not pumpkins, but it's still fall, right? Apples are fall. I think they are. All right, we have one more project. And the next one is for all my card makers out there. I know, I always tend to make 3D projects, but I know you guys want cards too. All right, let me take these and put them over here. Move this. Now the next one, of course, uses also that buffalo background check. And yes, it's still permanently attached to my stamparatus. Here it is. All right. I don't know what's happening. I need a longer table. All right, these are going over here. Are you guys tired of the buffalo check yet? I'm not. I don't think I'll ever be tired of it. So cute. All right, so this time we're gonna use that intricate framelit. Instead of the intricate stamp, we're gonna use that intricate framelit, all right? And, uh-oh, is Sue watching me? I've lost the framelit, Sue. She made me the greatest. Let me see, did I leave it over here? She made me the greatest frame holder of all time. And it, it's awesome, except I can't ever remember to put my stamps on, I mean my framelits on it. So we're gonna use the intricate framelit along with the open, the open image. And the top color is pumpkin pie. And the bottom color is that mango melody that I told you is so awesome. We're gonna start die, with a die cutting this time because I'm gonna adhere these with a fine tip glue pen, you guys. I don't know, do you think I can do it? You know how I feel about liquid adhesive. I don't know, I think it's gonna be fine because during my video this morning, it was just fine. All right, good grief, Erica, get it together. Here we go, it's hiding. I'm gonna use a precision base plate. If you guys don't have the precision base plate yet, it's a great accessory for your big shot. It helps with those intricate dies like this leaf. It can just be put right on your magnetic platform, although they told us to not use it on our magnetic platform because it does come together fast and it can pinch you. So it's better probably to use your other platform, but I just stick it on here. Yes, I have been pinched several times actually. 
It helps with these dies that have a lot of cutting surfaces. You know, um, a die that's really intricate like this needs pressure to cut on all of those little spaces. So sometimes I'll hear a customer say, I can't get it to cut. And that's because it's not getting enough pressure. If you use this precision base plate, um, it works really well. You can also add a shim to your, um, you know, on top of here to push down pressure more, more pressure. Um, but this precision base plate is great. I also use, um, I've shown you guys the dryer sheet, which works great as well. All right, I went through a couple of times for good measure. Turn it around, look at, yep, cut nicely. All right, we're gonna take that guy off and put just the plate on and let's cut out the outline. This one is super simple to cut out. And while we're here, let's go ahead and do the embossing too. The embossing will bring back, take off the magnetic platform, bring back the regular platform and the corrugated embossing folder. This time I am embossing that galvanized paper. This new galvanized um, cardstock is so cool. It's shiny, but not like our silver foil. It's just like a galvanized bucket. And I've cut it two and a half by five. Um, my card is only four and a fourth inches wide, but when you emboss with this, you're kind of shortening your paper because it's going up and down and up and down, so it kind of compresses it. Now, it's still gonna be a little bit long, um, but I'll just trim that off. That, um, that way, because if you cut it at four and a fourth exactly, it'll be too short for your paper. All right, set that aside and get our die brush. This is another accessory you can get for your Big Shot, the die brush with a little foam mat and it'll get a lot of those little guys out. And it's really good, especially when you're making a bunch of them. You can whip that out if you're not using the dryer sheets. Although I'm finding this one is so intricate that that, I don't know, the dryer sheet works too, but I don't know, that um, precision base plate does really, really well on that leaf. All right, so Carla says, I don't typically like the fine tip glue pen because it seems to take a long time to dry. It does, I agree. Um, but with something like this, your only other option is to use the multi-purpose adhesive sheets. I've used those with you guys before and I like them a lot. You have to remember to do them ahead of time. You have to put that multi-purpose adhesive sticker on the back of your cardstock before you cut it. So I thought we would just take a take um, a different turn this time and use the fine tip glue pen. The fine tip glue pen is great. My problem is that I try to squeeze it. So then I get way too much glue. So what I'm doing right here, I'm not squeezing it at all. At all. I'm just tapping it and a little tiny dot of glue is coming out every time I do that. Now before you do anything, Stick that little needle back in and close it because if you don't and you leave that open for any length of time, it's gonna dry, it's gonna clog. And then you have to get a new one. All right, carefully, carefully laying it here. I don't wanna move it around too much. And then what I like to do is set it aside with a clear block on top of it. Where did my clear block go? Here it is. So I'm gonna set this over here with a clear block right on top, and that's gonna hold it flat. And by the time we're ready for it, it actually will be dry, okay? All right, so now let's do the buffalo background stamp, yay! Okay, little leaf, I'm gonna need you to, to move just a bit. Careful, careful. All right, now, have you guys heard? We have new accessories for Stamparatus. This is grid paper, and it's really cute. It comes in this little pad of grid paper. <laughs> I don't know, I just really like it. Um, I think this would be great grid paper just for your workspace, you know? Um, if you want, you know, our grid paper is huge. So just having a little square of grid paper is nice too. So that's new, that's available now. All right, I'm gonna take a half sheet of Whisper White cardstock. This is more than you need, but when you make it bigger, you can use your magnet. Let's see, yep, got it in the right place. And if you put your... Um, stamp case underneath 
you will have a flat surface to ink. So ink up your Buffalo background stamp, Buffalo check background stamp. This is again, soft suede. I have used that color on all three projects today. It's my favorite brown. All right, lots of pressure in the corners. And you wanna make sure that your ink pad is nice and juicy. Uh oh, look at that. This is why I like the Stamparatus because I can come back and do that. And it looks like there's something on my, there's a little, you know what it is? It's a little doodad from that leaf. That's all right, we're gonna ink it again go back over and get it nice and solid. It's very hard to stamp these background stamps without the Stamparatus. It really is not very easy. So that's why I, if you like these background stamps and you haven't gotten the Stamparatus yet, what are you waiting for? It's so good. And it has a lot of other uses too, but that's my favorite use. All right, we're going to trim this down to four inches by five and a fourth. The ink is a little bit wet still. And one more, five and a fourth. And then we're just gonna put it on a soft suede card base. My card base is four and a fourth by 11. I've just cut a piece of cardstock in half on the short side, cut it in half. You can cut it on the long side too and then your fold will be on the side. All right, so let's put that there. Now here is that corrugated piece and I am finding that these corrugated pieces need quite a bit of adhesive. So be generous with your adhesive and stick that down right there. And now I'm just gonna come over here. I probably should use my trimmer for this. There we go. I have cut a circle um, from the Festive Farmhouse DSP. You can see it's Christmas on the back. And we're gonna put this on with dimensionals. Alessandra, you're getting your, your Stamparatus. Yay! Exciting, you're gonna love it. All right, so I've put that on there. Let's see if our leaf is ready. Nice and dry, yep, see, it didn't take too long, but because I did it at the beginning, I didn't have to sit and wait for it. All right, a couple of dimensionals on the leaf, right there. Now, we did not stamp our sentiment, so let's do that on a scrap piece. You know what, I have this long skinny one. Let's see if it'll fit on this. Again, soft suede. I think it'll fit. Perfect. And once again, another thing I've used on all three projects is this Taylor Tag Punch to cut my banners. The reason I have been using this as opposed to the Banner Triple Punch is because it's it has a shorter, you know, when you put it in the Triple Banner Punch, you lose about three quarters of an inch on this end. This one, you can kind of control it and see exactly where you're punching it. I still like the other one, but I just find that this one, using this punch this way, is really good for smaller, for smaller pieces. All right, let's put that there. And then I'm gonna grab some of these metallic pearls. These come in, um, when you get them, the package has silver and gold. Oops, sorry, I bumped the cord. And I'm gonna use my take your pick tool and scoop these guys up. Nope, I don't need two of you. Not yet. And I'm gonna slide those off. It's like a little spatula, I love it. Well, they're sticking to me. They're all wanting to get on my card. Down here, like that. All right, last but not least, we're gonna bring back that braided linen trim Make a bow and we're done. So cute, I just adore this card. Now what I was thinking, you know, if you did the colors different, maybe green, like a light green, 
um, and then the background um, stamp, maybe a pink. Wouldn't that be a fun spring card? So it doesn't have to just be fall, this leaf. You could really um, turn it into a spring or summer card depending on whatever colors you use. I thought that would be really cool. All right, you guys, let's review. Let's take a look at what we did today. We've got the card, we've got the pouches, and we've got the apple boxes. Remember that all of this is over on my blog. Um, oh no, <laughs> I have hair and tape on my paper. Um, all of this is on this PDF. You can print it, save it, download it, whatever you wanna do. It has everything you need to recreate these. And it also has the host code. If you put in a minimum $30 order, um, by Monday, you're gonna receive a make and take of each of these for me for free next week in the mail. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I will come back after I pick my daughter up and see if I missed any questions. And um, please let me know if there's anything that you wanna see on future Facebook Fridays or if you have any questions about today's projects. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you next Friday or probably midweek with a surprise Facebook Friday, hopefully. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.